So I think where I want to start is what was it like um, and what did you learn? Um, more specifically, you know, you, there was a quote in a Globe article that said, um, and it quoted you saying, this trip will certainly help us reduce the number of unknowns. So did this trip do that for you? It was, the trip was eye-opening. Uh, we had a chance, there was a, a delegation of eight uh, senators, um, which was the most of the members of the Special Senate Committee on Marijuana who were able to go. Um, and we had an amazing opportunity to meet with um, state officials, um, city of Denver uh, officials, law enforcement, um, legislators, uh, as well as um, go out in the field and visit some of the uh, businesses uh, themselves. And I think if I had to kind of summarize it, for most people, um, when they think about marijuana, I think the image that they have is somebody smoking a joint. And that's what they remember from 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. And I think many people say, well, you know, what's the big deal? Um, you know, it's legal to drink a beer or, you know, a glass of wine. This isn't all that different. For people today, they aren't, um, for the most part, they aren't even smoking marijuana. They're vaping it. They're dabbing it. They're um, eating it. They're drinking it. Um, it's even infused into uh, into um, energy drinks, for example. So um, even the notion of like smoking a joint is is out of date, and 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 it's so different today in terms of what products are available and how it's consumed. If we can go back to one thing that you mentioned, you talked about edibles, and the governor talked about edibles in an interview this earlier this week on the radio, um, where he basically was talking about the concerns that he has with the um, sporadic or uh, reports that you know have been coming out about those driving or having to show up in the emergency room with edibles. Do you share, after your trip, do you share those concerns with the governor? So one of the things we definitely heard loud and clear is that edibles, um, which is where THC, which is the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana, is essentially infused into food or beverages, or in some cases even just sprayed on um, on, on existing products. Um, and we definitely heard that that has been a, a major challenge, you know, in Colorado. Some of the challenges are that if a, if a young child, for example, gets hold of, of one of these products, doesn't even know that it has marijuana in it, you can, that, can be, that can be very serious and has put a number of young children in the hospital. Um, it also is difficult for people to tell how much THC is in a particular thing, product, a brownie, a cookie, or a beverage. Um, so Colorado has, um, has passed uh, new legislation and they're trying to put in place new regulations so that the packaging and the labeling would be clear. When you, um, when you consume marijuana as an edible, one of the things we learned is that it, you also don't feel the effect uh, right away. So it can, it can be a lag of a half hour, an hour, sometimes even longer. So for people who particularly um, you know, have used, used this before, and that's why we've seen the problem sometimes, uh, they've seen the problem with the tourists sometimes coming into the state who, um, who are not you know, aware of, of some of the, um, the issues around consuming edibles, mm -hmm. they, they, it, it can lead to um, over-consuming mm -hmm. and then there can be a, you know, a, 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 a negative, harsh, rea adverse reaction from that. So they are, um, there's a lot of issues around edibles. Um, they, they, they are about 40 to 50 percent of the market in Colorado. Well, I think one of the advantages that Massachusetts, you know, w would have um, is that, you know, we, Colorado has been the guinea pig um, and Washington state and there's a few other states that, uh, you know, have already had legal marijuana for, for a while. So at least some of these issues are being surfaced and People are trying to figure out ways to, to, to deal with them and to make sure that the you know they, that public health and public safety is is paramount. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the reason we've been researching this issue already for almost a year now, um, and why we formed the special committee, and why we took the trip to Colorado. So I think we've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. There are certainly things you could do in terms of packaging requirements, labeling requirements, potentially 
keeping certain p particularly dangerous products off the market. For example, you know, should we have THC infused jelly beans? Right. Um, you know, is there just too much risk that that could be consumed by a child who would not even know that that's you know a product of marijuana? Um, I think those are all things that we we've, we've learned, and I think if marijuana, you know, if the voters given we expect this to be on the ballot in November, I if the voters did, did pass the ballot referendum, I think that those are some of the things we would, as lawmakers and, and as regulators in the state, would, I think, want to look at very, very hard. So if you were to put these two, um, the Massachusetts can do it or Massachusetts will have a hard time dealing with this into two different columns, what are things that you've learned um, thus far from your trip there? Um, would you put edibles in a category of Massachusetts can deal with this? I there's not that many issues that I think um, you, that Colorado, that you absolutely can't deal with at all. Right. I mean, um, there are ways to tackle if you have the, you know, but the thing to understand is that it takes a lot of resources, mm -hmm. you know, from, from state and local government and law enforcement and others to, to, to deal with some of these issues. It takes, uh, takes a lot of time and effort. Um, and it's imperfect. So there, there's, there's not, edibles is a good example, there's a lot of things you can do, um, but probably you're still, you're never going to stamp out any of the concerns, you know, of accidental ingestion or, or, or people not using the, the product in a, in a responsible way. Um, and that's just one example of a number of different, you know, different mm -hmm. issues that, that, that are in that, that category. I think the question for, for Massachusetts, you know, lawmakers and regulators is, you know, if this, if the voters, you know, did make the decision to legalize it, it would be how, how do you, you know, minimize the risk of, of any, you know, um, public safety, public health, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, negative impacts, particularly where children are concerned. Did you learn anything um regarding the relationship between um, what some of the critics say is the relationship between marijuana or legalizing marijuana and the opioid crisis while you were in Colorado. I mean, obviously, this is a nationwide epidemic um, that's happening, and we're dealing with it here in Massachusetts. We have a bill that just passed the House. Um, did you learn anything on that trip that uh, might, uh, about that particular relationship? We certainly asked Questions about about that and in and, and the interaction and, and uh, you know interplay between you know use of marijuana and use of prescri prescription opioids or uh, or heroin or other substances, and unfortunately the data is is inconclusive at, at this point. So folks in Colorado weren't really able to tell us you know with any um, certainty one one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, there are certainly uh, some people who believe that um, you know medical marijuana, for example, it can be an alternative for some people to to using opioid prescription opioids. Um, but there are other people who will say, well, but you know, use of marijuana, um, particularly by teenagers, you know, in some cases, you know, also puts them down a road to to you know to using other harder drugs. Um, so the one of the big themes that we heard in general was that um, that uh, data is a problem. Having good data, you know, and part of that was because Colorado didn't have good baseline data on you know usage rates, on driving under the influence, on hospitalizations, on you know all kinds of public safety measures, because they weren't necessarily tracking a lot of that just for marijuana. You know, in some cases they might have been tracking. For, for all substances and not breaking out marijuana separately, or it was being tracked differently in different parts of the state. So not having very clear baseline d data and then being able to measure the trends you know, over time has, was one of the lessons we, we heard and one of the things that w was uh, you know, recommended to us was that if this came to Massachusetts, that we should make sure we really do a, a good job having good having good data and good um, tracking of um, trends over time so that policymakers and regulators you know can make better better public policy decisions um, you know what did you learn there that um, wouldn't work in Massachusetts 
Uh, a lot of, you know, now we talked a bit about edibles yeah. and the challenges around right. that. And I think we've got some hard, we would have hard questions to wrestle with there as to what, you know, what uh, products um, might, uh, you know, cross the line in mm -hmm. terms of um, whether we, they would be considered legal products for sale. Um, there are some products in, in Colorado and I think in Washington that are now very, very high potency THC. I mean, again, that back to that image of what a lot of people have, you know, that, that joint that people, you know, you know, uh, kind of have in their mind that was back in the in the day, you know, was about two percent THC, two percent. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't even find products with two percent uh, yeah. anymore. And in, it, there's products in Colorado now that are up above ninety percent THC, and these are concentrates. They yeah. basically extract yeah. wow. the THC from the plant, from the flower, mm -hmm. and the leaves, and they make hash oil mm -hmm. and other other formulations of that that um, you, know, you can vape or or smoke and incredibly potent THC. So, um, you know, we don't even know a lot of the research that has, you know, there's a limit, limited amount of research that's been done to begin with because marijuana is a, is a schedule one, you know, illegal substance under federal law. But for the research that has been done in some other parts of the world and a little bit in this country, you know, it's generally been done with lower potency THC. Mm -hmm. So there are big questions surrounding what the impact of that is in terms of addiction rates, in terms of health health impacts. So there's some, you know, it, it, uncertainty there. Another another big area um, that has been a challenge for Colorado, and we, you know, we would have to think hard about how we handle that is uh, is home growing. Mm -hmm. um, so in Colorado, they do allow people, both for medical reasons and for just recreational, to to grow a certain number of plants in their own home. The challenge there is that, you know, how do you enforce that? How do you know how many plants somebody is actually growing? Mm -hmm. And it does appear that the black market, which is still thriving, it seems to still be thriving in Colorado, um, a lot of that is being diverted from, from home growing. Mm -hmm. um, that can kind of, in some cases, hide under the, you know, appear to be legal, um, but may, may in fact, you know, be being diverted to, mm -hmm. to either youth um, use or, or being going across state lines. So that's, a, that's, a, that's another challenging issue that we, you know, we'd have to take a, look, take a hard look at. Um, and uh, I mean, simple question, did you have a chance to try any of the product at all? Did not, no, that yeah. was not the point of the trip. Oh, okay. uh, to, uh, to, uh, we wanted to learn about the products mm -hmm. and learn about the industry and yeah. learn about all the regulatory mm -hmm. issues. But uh, was not our, didn't not want to our take intention to. Of the uh, fact that it was no, legal in that state. We uh, we did we didn't think that was necessary uh -huh. as part of our research. Uh, okay. So uh, we know we were not uh, not not sampling the products. Was there uh, is there anything else that I haven't covered in any of my questions that you'd like to address? Uh, I think that there's also a lot of issues that come up that I think most people pro probably a lot of what we've talked about already um, you know seem like reasonable considerations. Most people would say okay. Uh, you know, I can see those are going to be issues we have to work through, but there are some things that come up that just we you, you wouldn't have thought about at all. And a good example of that is all of the agricultural issues that come up because, you know, if you're starting to grow marijuana, uh, you know, in many of these warehouses where it's grown, um, the conditions are very uh, appealing to, to pests, um, aphids, um, black mold, and, and a variety of other pests. It's very humid conditions. And so now you get into all kinds of concerns around pesticides that are being used. And because there are marijuana is illegal under federal law, there are no pesticides that are approved for use on marijuana. Mm -hmm. So you had in Colorado, they've had growers using pesticides where they're not even considered fit for human consumption. Oh, yeah. um, now, if you're going to be putting it in edibles, that's a, that's a serious issue. Right. Um, in mm -hmm. some cases, they're, they're pesticides that are not, uh, not safe for um, uh, being uh, burned. You know, so if you're going to be smoking it, for example, then that's not. So they've had to, Colorado regulators have had to figure out, you know, they've got, had to go through thousands of different pesticides and figure out which ones could in fact be used safely. And they've had to try to work with the industry on that. Um, that's been a, a major challenge that folks need to keep in mind is that a lot of these kinds of tasks, whether it's related to agri agriculture, whether it's related to, related to environmental protection, whether it's related to food safety, um, typically is done by the federal government because you know you've got the USDA, you have the the EPA, you have the 
FDA, Food and Drug Administration, so for many different products, the federal government is actually doing a lot of the work to make sure that it's done safely and doesn't harm the environment, doesn't harm human health. When the case of marijuana, the federal government has nothing, to, wants to have nothing to do with it. It's, they can't. The federal agencies are, are forbidden, right, because it's illegal. So that means all of that burden now falls on state, on the state government and the local government to, to do those things that ordinarily they don't have to do. So that means it's a steep learning curve, substantial resources. The Colorado um, Department of Agriculture estimates that it about costs about three, them, co is costing them about three million dollars a year um, just to do all of the this um, uh, licensing and enforcement mm -hmm. and education around uh, growing and, and use of pesticides. Yeah. So there's going to be a big money component to this as well. Too. There's a it, uh -huh. very substantial cost yeah. in terms yeah. of uh, regulation, um, both um, establishing the regulations and then and then licensing and then enforcement and training and education. Huge um, need for training of law enforcement. Because um, this is such a big change, the major impact. Kind of sounds like this might be a hard pill to swallow for uh, the legislature, if approved by the, the the voters. Well, the question I think would be considering that a lot. I mean, you have the uh, you know the leaders of our state are have no interest in mm -hmm. doing this legislatively. Which seems unlikely given the position of the speaker and and the governor, um, and many l lawmakers that the legislature would you know take up um, legislation to, to, to legalize marijuana mm -hmm. for recreational use. But we know that there is an effort to have it on the ballot, and we know that that campaign you know, is moving forward. They certainly got enough signatures. So I think our view, we do think it's likely that that would be on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. um, what I think the discussion will be that we'll have to have in the legislature and with Governor Baker is, you know, if the ballot question passes, are there um, are there provisions in the ballot question that relate to you know, for the thing, kinds of things we talked about? What kinds of products would be allowed? What sort of mm -hmm. um, marketing would or would not be allowed? How would we handle home growing? How would we handle all of the, you know, the costs that would need to be incurred by state government and local government? And what would the taxes and fees be to, you know, to offset that? Um, issues around driving, issues around employment, um, banking and finance issues. So if we, if the law, legislature felt that those were not all adequately addressed in the ballot question, and what we've learned from the challenges that they're having in Colorado, and we've also been looking at Washington State too, mm -hmm. uh, as well, then I think we would have to look hard at you know some of those areas that we might want to um, um, potentially make some changes. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate yep. it. My pleasure. Thank you.